Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone to Oz, and here is your detailed forecast update on Tropical Cyclone Alpha at a Category 3 strength. Severe Tropical Cyclone well offshore from the Queensland coastline, weakening slightly, but the forecast has changed dramatically overnight, with the Queensland landfall now expected in the next week. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it, but let's get stuck straight into things this morning with Severe Tropical Cyclone Alfred just offshore from Frederick Reef at this time here, where you can see wind observations this morning out of the south at a 106 kilometers an hour and they have been stronger overnight with peak winds up to 119 kilometers an hour. This is a strong tropical cyclone. I need to stress that enough with wind gusts here gusting up towards 150 kilometers an hour and it's well outside of the storm's eye. In fact, it wasn't even really in the storm's true eye wall. So this tropical cyclone here really is blowing some incredible winds just even outside of its eye wall. Overnight, it has been downgraded to a category three strength severe tropical cyclone. You can see that's because it's completely deteriorated on, on satellite imagery overnight. It is still looking like a healthy tropical cyclone, but uh, it really it isn't looking as good as it did about 48 hours ago, and it does need to, to do a little bit of work before we can call for any sort of strengthening again. But I imagine that this is terminal weakening just kicking in right now from Tropical Cyclone Alfred. It is going to be a very slow storm to weaken as it draws towards the Queensland coastline. You can see this swirling mess of convection and thunderstorms is now heading towards Queensland at this time, and you can see those outer bands and those outer clouds now starting to get themselves over Fraser Island, then along the south central Queensland coastline. And we need to talk about wind observations there. First off, finally, they've calmed down a little bit at Hamilton Island, 30 kilometers an hour this morning, as opposed to 45 or 50 as they have been for the last week. But wind observations now Rundle Island, 45 kilometers an hour, and then a couple of other islands, Lady Elliot Island, there's a ship down here, uh, and a few ships down here actually right now reporting uh, winds between 60 and 70 kilometers an hour. In fact, slightly stronger than that, winds at 61 kilometers an hour at Double Island Point here, just south of Fraser Island. So these gale force winds really beginning to pick up as they rotate into this system, and it is starting to get quite blustery here across a lot of locations uh, into the south central and across the Sunshine Coast. And look at how far away they are from Tropical Cyclone Alfred as well. It just goes to show how big the storm's influence is right now. Here's a look at where the Tropical Cyclone is on the forecast model. It's just going to zoom out to get the whole picture in. You can see moving towards Queensland throughout the remainder of today. We're expecting the system to weaken uh, a little bit further throughout the course of today, but it's not going to be too quick to weaken. Before it makes that turn towards the south, it looks like it might actually do a little bit of a loop around itself through uh, tonight into early tomorrow morning. Either way, it's going to turn towards the southeast uh, later on tonight into very early tomorrow morning. We'll see this system here make its closest approach to Fraser Island, only about 250 kilometers away from the northern tip of the island at about 5 or 6 o'clock tomorrow evening uh, before it then pulls away further towards the southeast and weakens a little bit quicker and moves a little bit quicker as well. This all looks pretty certain. You can see that the Bureau of Meteorology has also been calling for this forecast as well. And through Monday, we're expecting it to head down into the Tasman Sea where it will meet its demise down there uh, as a, uh, the end of a significant tropical cyclone as a lot of tropical cyclones do but what's this we'll take a look at the forecast models they call it to stop as it as we push the forecast through tuesday and then it swings back towards queensland and you can see here drawing into the in towards the sunshine coast for a landfall on thursday or friday the 6th or 7th of march respectively interesting stuff that's certainly not been called for with the other forecast models right well no the other forecast models are now saying the exact same thing so my hands are tied now with this situation here with all major forecast models and get this the beautiful Meteorology now calling for a landfall sometime on the 6th or the 7th of March between Rockhampton down towards Brisbane. That is some really good consistency and really good congruency between the forecast models. It's almost too good to be true, especially with how much of a pain the system has been to forecast. I will get to these details in just a few minutes and tell you exactly what's expected, what's driving this system right now. But I just want to briefly talk about the impacts that we're expecting along uh, the coastal parts of South Central Queensland. I just want to get that out there that we're now expecting that Queensland landfall right now. Yeah. Anyways, in terms of impacts, you can see still a strong tropical cyclone offshore from the Queensland coastline. And as it makes its closest approach, uh, approach to Fraser Island, rather, you can see it is still going to remain a very strong tropical cyclone. Wind gusts around the centre should be up to about 180 kilometres an hour. On the northern tip of Fraser Island, they're going to be approaching 125 kilometres an hour. We're expecting cyclonic conditions there, and I would be surprised if a cyclone warning hasn't or isn't going to be raised on the northern tip of Fraser Island. In fact, for the majority of Fraser Island, they are expecting significant gale force wind gusts of at least 80 kilometres an hour right through the course of Sunday, especially in towards Sunday evening. Peak wind gusts between 60 and 80 kilometers an hour will be felt between coastal areas stretching, uh, stretching through Yapoon, down through uh, Gladstone, Agnes Water, Bundaberg, Harvey Bay, and then as far south as about Maroochydore through Sunday, with the strongest winds, like I said, being along Fraser Island, and then just between Harvey Bay down towards Maroochydore. That's where the strongest winds are expected to be. That's the most exposed coastal locations there. We're also expecting brief periods of strong wind gusts on coastal areas outside of Bundaberg and out towards Agnes Water. It is a strong 
strong tropical cyclone and certainly one to be taking quite seriously that's for sure you can see these wind gusts are no joke and could cause some significant damage to property so make sure you do have your garden pruned up outdoor furniture all strapped down especially if you are on Fraser Island I don't think there's any need to prepare for a significant tropical cyclone impact there certainly isn't any need to prepare I guess because the rainfall accumulations are not expected to be too high from this tropical cyclone here but you can still expect up to about 100 millimeters on the northern tip of Fraser Island and accumulations between 25 to 75 millimeters along parts of the Sunshine Coast especially as we head in towards tomorrow morning and into early tomorrow afternoon rainfall accumulations though outside of Harvey Bay up to Bundaberg and then and definitely outside of Bundaberg will be very disappointing to say the least with only a couple of millimeters expected here and there and if we were going to be seeing some good rainfall accumulations from this tropical and if we were going to be seeing some good rainfall accumulations from this tropical cyclone, you'd be starting to see some heavy showers here move across the Queensland coastline. It doesn't look like that's going to be the case. The tropical cyclone, whilst it is pulling towards Queensland, it's not going to get too much closer distance-wise. So these outer bands here, I really struggle to see how they're going to find themselves over Queensland, or at least the Queensland coastline. I don't think that it's going to be a wet tropical cyclone at all. A couple of drops of rainfall expected here and there, and I'll be the first to let you know if that does change. So again, preparing for a tropical cyclone here, if you are on Fraser Island, I'm sure every Everybody is now prepared for significant gale force winds. We've had plenty of warning there. And then for those between Rockhampton down towards Harvey Bay, I'd definitely be prepared for some gale force winds here and there. So I'm glad that I've told everybody be, to be pruning up the garden. It's a good thing to be doing here, even if those winds don't eventuate, especially once you get up towards Rockhampton and Yapoon. The chances are these winds aren't really going to be eventuating up there, but it's a good thing to have prepared in cyclone season and as we head into the back half of storm season as well. So done no harm in preparing uh, adequately for that. But yeah, certainly a good time to be. Be, uh, ready uh, ready for action with Tropical Cyclone Alfred here. It is a significant system and it is heading towards the Queensland coastline and whilst it's not expected to landfall at least initially, it is expected to bring some significant impacts ashore pretty much exclusively for Fraser Island but we could still be seeing some strong wind gusts here and there as well. Let's push this forecast forward now and talk about what's expected into the long run. So as I said we're really still not 100% sure with what is expected here with this Tropical Cyclone swinging back in towards Queensland but considering all more four major forecast models and the Bureau of Meteorology are now pretty much completely on board with it and the consistency is incredible. Uh, there's really no choice for me to say that I disagree with this system here. So I think the chances are now that there is going to be landfall somewhere along the southeast or the south central Queensland coastline sometime between the 5th and the 8th of March. And as forecast models push this forecast forward as well as we see new forecasts, especially in towards tonight and into tomorrow, I expect this to the, just the chances to be upped all round for this tropical cyclone landfall somewhere along the Queensland coastline. I really don't see a world where this does doesn't happen now just considering the amount of consistency that the forecast models have. Now I do have a few issues with this forecast is I don't believe that it takes into account the sea temperatures just offshore from the southeast Queensland coastline. There's warm enough for a tropical cyclone but we're talking about temperatures here 25 pushing 26 and it only warms up a little bit as it gets closer to the coastline here where they'll be pushing closer towards 27 maybe even 28 degrees Celsius in some places. So it will be a very weak tropical cyclone and whilst it is going to be heading into the coast as an intensifying system it's going to be so big beaten down by those cold sea temperatures and likely high levels of wind shear that it's going to be a ragged mess as it gets itself into the southeast corner of Queensland. What that means is it's not likely to present the risk of some significant winds and there is going to be some rainfall here and there, especially some heavy falls are expected throughout at least a 36 hour period on the southern side of the system here. It's going to behave a little bit like an east coast low I guess in that fashion but uh, in terms of really heavy rainfall and significant tropical cyclone impacts there's really nothing that can be expected at this time in terms of really significant and really gnarly stuff. It is still just a little bit too, too early to tell at this time and you can see all the major forecast models are suggesting wind gusts up to about 125 kilometers an hour. Even the GFS is calling for stuff like that even though they're calling for a much more northern based tropical cyclone. I really don't think the tropical cyclone will move north of Fraser Island. That would take some really strong steering currents to do and there really just isn't those steering currents available for this tropical cyclone to move that far north. The Icon forecast model is calling for a bit of a brute of a system here to be heading in towards the southeast corner of Queensland so we we kind of hope that the icon forecast model here doesn't eventuate but again the the forecast models i believe are just getting a big feel for this system right now they've got their antenna out and they're just trying to see what they can pick up here and what they can make of this tropical cyclone so again whilst we've got a pretty eclectic mix between forecast models i do still fully believe that a category one strength landfall is the most likely uh, scenario here somewhere along the sunshine coast up towards fraser island but with other forecast models also calling for brisbane and gold coast landfalls at a significant intensity we really can't be writing things off right now
even though the Axis is calling for a wind speed here of 200 kilometers an hour, I think we can actually be saying that that's more or less impossible at this time, considering that it is a convective forecast model and numbers like this are not unheard of from an Axis G3 forecast. But again, at this stage, we do need to be keeping every option possible or every option open at this time and anything can really happen with Tropical Cyclone Alfred. One thing's for sure though is that this is a very, very hokey pokey track and I'll open up some of the Tropical Cyclone forecast tracks here for Tropical Cyclone Alfred. You can see with the Beautiful Neology now taking this system, oh, I need to keep this page uh, loaded, you can see with the Beautiful Neology track here taking this system down and then swinging it back out towards uh, the ocean in a southeasterly fashion and then on Wednesday and in towards Thursday swinging this back towards the coastline here and if you extrapolate this by the looks of things going in towards Fraser Island or the northern parts of the Sunshine Coast but between other forecast models here you can see pretty much every single one of them is calling for a track in towards Queensland at some point here over the course of the next uh, week or between the 5th uh, out towards the 8th of March. I really do believe that with every forecast model now suggesting a bit of a landfall event occurring here you can see the UKM, the Bureau of Meteorology forecast, the Eastern Bear forecast here uh, and the yeah the extrapolated Bureau of Meteorology forecasts all suggesting that landfall by the looks of things in towards Queensland. It really does look like a highly likely scenario at this time and it's hard to disagree with all of those forecast models as well. Just before I get into the potential impacts and what you need to be doing uh, right now in regards to this system, what's driving it is this strong high pressure ridge here down in the Tasman Sea. Uh, quite a strong ridge actually, it's going to be quite a lot stronger than we initially thought here and that's just going to swing around and drive this system in towards southeast Queensland. It's not really going to give this system an opportunity to go down towards Norfolk Island or New Zealand. There's just going to be too much push in the system back in towards Queensland and also unfortunately this system is going to be far enough away from the high pressure system that it's not going to be battling too much in the way of wind shear and whilst wind shear can destroy a tropical cyclone it really looks like this system might actually find itself in a not a favorable environment but not an absolutely terrible environment at all which is why these forecast models are taking this into the southeast corner of Queensland at a semi-respectable intensity. Anyways, let's talk about what needs to happen if you live in southeast Queensland or south central Queensland. Right now, nothing. Do not prepare, do not panic, do not uh, panic by, just do not get ready for this tropical cyclone at all if you live uh, south or across the Sunshine Coast or into the southeast corner of Queensland or even into the northeast corner of New South Wales. Whilst all four major forecast models are suggesting a landfall, this is the first day that they've or actually suggested a landfall and the first forecast that I've seen with any kind of consistency bet uh, with between the forecast models with tropical cyclone Alfred. So you can understand why I'm really, really skeptical of it this morning. Just monitor the forecast closely and I'll have definitive answers for you by Monday uh, at the absolute latest on Tuesday, which will still give you a couple of days to adequately prepare for this system. It's not common systems go towards Brisbane and the Gold Coast, and if precedence is any measure of uh, future performance from Tropical Cyclone Alpha, then I'm uh, certainly not expecting a cyclone to go on towards this part of southeast Queensland, but it is the 2025 cyclone season, it is the Coral Sea, and we've had some crazy stuff happen already with Tropical Cyclone Alpha, so I would not be completely writing it off at this time. Again, watch but don't act over the course of this weekend. If things do turn for the worst, you will have all day tomorrow to prepare, but at this time I don't think we're going to have definitive answers on this system with absolute 100% con uh, congruency and 100% agreements between forecasting agencies and forecast models until about Monday or so, which will still give you plenty of time to prepare, and it looks like this system here will come through sometime between the 5th and the 8th of March, so still plenty of time out there for this tropical cyclone to change its mind and head back out to see. We're really hoping that that's the case from the system here, but it is looking more and more uncertain just with every new forecast model that's coming out, just saying that this is going to careen into the southeast corner of Queensland. Scary stuff, interesting stuff, that's for sure, but again, stay calm, stay cool, calm and collected in an event like this and watch but don't act at this time. Whew, that is enough talk on Severe Tropical Cyclone Alfred, an interesting system, that's for sure, and a strong one. Uh, it's looking impressive on satellite imagery, certainly dominating the Australian weather scene. If you take a look elsewhere around Australia, you're going to realize why I'm wrapping this video up so quickly is because there isn't an awful lot to talk about in the Australian weather front. Yes, there's some hot days here and there, and yes, there's some rainy ones here and there, so we're going to start things off by talking about rainfall across northern Queensland as well. Disregard the rainfall forecast here across the southeast and the northeast of New South Wales. Uh, I'm really not expecting uh, this rainfall to eventuate right now, and again, it's not really worth our time talking about, but it looks like some rainfall is now beginning to pipe itself up on the forecast, at least in the longer range by the looks of things. You can see all the major forecast models in that longer range 
period. Now, calling for a little bit of rainfall here, north of the Wet Sundays, up through Mackay, the Wet Sundays themselves, and up towards Townsville. And you can see good accumulations are expected beyond about Tuesday, the 11th of March onwards. You can see as a bit of an onshore flow kind of gets itself together here. And mid-March, that aligns with our forecast about a month ago in terms of when this rainfall is going to pipe up again for the far northern reaches of Queensland. I do expect it to be around mid to late March. And again, it really looks like they're going to be heading into a much wetter period as we get out towards the 13th of the 14th of March up in far north Queensland, even across north Queensland as well, north of Rockhampton up through Mackay, the Whit Sundays, Townsville, you name it. It looks like a good amount of rainfall is on the cards here as we get into the back end of the uh, second week of March and into the third week of March. It looks like some good rainfall accumulations can be expected up there. And we're talking numbers up to about 150 millimetres through here as well. And whilst the other forecast models haven't really clasped onto it just yet at this time, you can see the GFS forecast model not really calling for an awful lot and the Axis and the Icon forecast model don't go out that fast. So in terms of the rainfall accumulations right now, a little bit unreliable to be looking at, but still, it definitely looks like a little bit of rainfall is going to be coming through around this time here. That onshore flow has been on the forecast for the last couple of days and it has been bump, uh, bouncing around between North Queensland and more central parts of Queensland, but it certainly looks like it is going to come to one part of Queensland at the very least as we get out towards the 20th of March in line with our long range forecast there. More rainfall to come for far North Queensland, that's for sure. Heaps and heaps of rainfall expected to come to round out the wet season of 2025 and I do expect it to be a very wet end to March and also a very wet start to April across parts of far North Queensland. The Matt and Julian Oscillation which is what causes and bumps up tropical activity is expected to return as well as we get into the backside of March so that always has the risk of firing out tropical lows and tropical cyclones here and there and whilst there's nothing on the forecast at least in the long range no tropical lows or no tropical cyclone spins up even on either sides of the nation you can see even Western Australia looking pretty dry in terms of tropical activity unless you get well out to see here in the GFS calling for tropical cyclones as we get out towards Mauritius and Reunion uh, but in terms of tropical cyclone and tropical low activity there is not an awful lot to talk about either in the long range which is very good news because we've definitely got our hands tied with tropical cyclone Alfred at this time. Conditions very conducive for it as well though up in North Queensland you can see minus the upwelling that tropical cyclone Alfred has caused where temperatures have dropped to about 25 or 26 degrees Celsius where the storm system has passed over uh, but apart from that you can see sea temperatures out in the middle of the Coral Sea 29 pushing 30 degrees Celsius in some of these places here especially along the Cape York Peninsula and still 32 pushing 33 degrees Celsius in places in parts of the Gulf of Carpentaria so very very warm and toasty indeed warm temperatures as well across parts of the Northern Territory and the coastal Western Australia as well just the runaway champions in terms of sea temperatures pretty much anywhere in the world at this time of the year 31 pushing 32 along the coastline and then put 30 pushing 31 well out to sea as well so much above average there and plenty of fuel for these tropical cyclones to make the most of it's normally in, th in towards the backside of March and into the first couple of weeks of April that we see a really powerful tropical cyclone offshore from Western Australia it's happened pretty much every year for the last couple of years whether Zelia was that powerful tropical cyclone this year we still don't know but with these sea temperatures it's hard to see that another powerful tropical cyclone will not be in the making offshore from Western Australia the conditions are just too good to be true for some of these tropical cyclones up there but yeah, on that note, not an awful lot more to be talking about. We could go on for days about Tropical Cyclone Alfred, an extended forecast update expected on it later on this afternoon as well. We're really going to be hammering home the details and hopefully I can start to give some answers later on this afternoon for those across southeast Queensland and also south central Queensland as well in terms of when this Tropical Cyclone is going to be heading for the coastline and what impacts can be expected as well. So if you are interested in that and yet that's your cup of tea, daily cycling updates to your cup of tea, then make sure you are subscribed to the Cyclone Source channel and click the like button as well. Uh, it shows the support and leave me a comment if you haven't understood anything or you wish to give some feedback as well. Uh, click the join button as well. A special shout out to channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now and again I could not run this show without them and their support is much appreciated and all the channel sponsors help me gain access to fantasy software like this. So again thank you to all of the channel sponsors. Their appreciation, their support is much appreciated here on the Cyclone Source channel. Check out the Facebook page but that is all for me today and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.